We say that lattice is complete. If uh, Suprema and Infima exist for any subset, any subset of its elements. So if we take an arbitrary subset of uh, our lattice S, uh, then there must be an element that is greater than all the elements from this subset. And at the same time, it should be smaller than all other elements that are greater than all elements from this subset. This is a supremum, the supremum of this subset. And we have a similar condition for the infimum. Um, well, one thing is that every finite lattice is necessarily complete. And in this course, we're going to deal with mainly with uh, finite lattices. Um, why is it complete? Well, because if you take a subset of a finite lattice, this subset is going to be finite. How do you compute its uh, infimum? You take two elements from this subset, they have an infimum because this is a lattice. Then you take this infimum and another element from the subset, and you get their infimum, which also exists, and so on. Because uh, your subset is finite, this process is going to end at some point and you'll get the infimum of the entire subset. And you can compute the supremum similarly. Are there lattices that are not complete? Yes, but they must be infinite. And one example we've already seen, it's uh, the lattice of natural numbers. It's not complete for a very simple reason. And the reason is that there is no largest natural number. So the, the set n, the set of all natural numbers itself, does not have a supremum. Its supremum doesn't exist. So now, now, now let's look at another infinite lattice which is, although infinite, nevertheless complete. Um, let's take the real interval including all numbers from 0 to 1. All real numbers between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. And the usual uh, less than or equal to relation. So this is a complete lattice. Infimum and supremum are defined as a, a minimum and maximum, as for natural numbers. And if we look at an arbitrary subset of 0, 1 of this real interval from 0 to 1, then the supremum of this arbitrary subset is going to be the smallest number that is bigger than all numbers in this subset. And similarly for the infimum. Now, in this case, uh, supremum and infimum exist for all subsets of the real interval. In particular, uh, we don't have this problem here. Uh, we don't have the problem as we had here where the set of natural numbers didn't have the largest element. Here we have the largest element 1, here we have the smallest element 0, and for every subset we can also find the largest element and the smallest element. 
the largest element doesn't have to belong to this subset. For example, if we take all the numbers uh, in this interval that are smaller, strictly smaller than one half, then one half doesn't belong to this subset. So we can't define uh, the supremum as the maximum element in the subset. But still, uh, one half is the, the smallest number in the interval that is bigger than all numbers that are strictly smaller than one half. Okay, so uh, the real interval from zero to one is indeed a complete lattice. And now we're in a position to define the basic theorem of formal concept analysis. We'll do it in two parts. So we'll have the first part in this video and the second part in the next video. The theorem looks a little bit complicated, but its meaning is not that hard to grasp. So, this is the first part of the basic theorem. So let's take an arbitrary formal context, GMI. What the theorem says is that the concept lattice of GMI And we'll denote this concept lattice like this. The letter B of GMI. And we will also underline B. Now, B stands for begriff, which is German for concept. And that's the usual notation for the concept lattice. Um, for the set of concepts of this formal context, GMI ordered with respect to subconcept, superconcept relationship. All right, so what the theorem says is that the concept lattice of GMI is a complete lattice. And that's how we can define the infimum and the supremum. So for the inf for the supremum, um, let's say we've got uh, a certain set of formal concepts. Um, Right here. So let's say we have a uh, set of formal concepts A, T, B, T, where uh, T comes from some set of indices T. And uh, this set of concepts is a subset of our concept lattice. B of GMI. So let's say we, we take a one such set and we want to define the supremum for, uh, for this set. We do it as follows. We take the formal concept um, whose extent includes all the extents of this concepts, of the concepts from this set. So it's going to be um, the union of AT. And we have to take the closure of double prime. And the intent is just the uh, properties, the attributes that are shared by all concepts from this set. So we take the intersection of all this BT. So that's how we define the supremum. And the infimum is defined similarly. So we take the intersection of concept extends. And uh, the union, the closure of the union of concept intents. Well, again, I'm not going to prove this. It's uh, the proof is not difficult, but a little bit technical. Uh, the main point here 
is that the concept lattice of any formal concept, of any formal context, is always complete. So you are not able, if you start with the formal context and you compute its concept lattice, you are not able to get a lattice which is similar to this one or to any other lattice that is not complete. The concept lattice of a formal context is always complete. Um, then we may ask uh, a reverse question. If you take a complete lattice, is it possible to somehow represent it by a formal concept? In the sense that, is there a formal context such that if you compute its concept lattice, it will be isomorphic, similar in structure to the lattice from which you started? We're going to answer this question using the second part of the basic theorem in the next video.